الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبع بالإحسان لمدين أيها الأباء الكرام وأمهات الفضليات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته That's very poor السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته That's better than the first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنَهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا Whenever you are greeted with the greetings of Islam, which is the most beautiful greeting, subhanak, someone is praying for you for barakah and salam, peace and blessings. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called al-jannah, one of the names of al-jannah is Daru salam the home of peace. And the people of Al Jannah, be idni la, may Allah make us be among them, Ya Rabb. When they would dwell in Al Jannah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, they will have angels welcoming them, saying, "Salamun alaykum tibatum fadhuluha khalidin," greeting them with the greetings of Islam. So when you are greeted with the greetings of Islam, you greet equivalently or better than that. So once more again, let me say. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ما شاء الله. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgive our sins. Um, after thanking Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the Lord of the universe, and we pray that Allah سبحانه وتعالى pour His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear humble fathers, brothers, mothers, well as sisters in the Deen, um, please do pardon me today. My voice, I have cold. Um, inshallah, it's all khair. Um, I have promised to come here today, and I, would, I wouldn't like to break that promise. So I said, inshallah, I will come even if I spend a few minutes with you, inshallah. So by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not going to spend more than an hour here. Inshallah, we'll try our best to benefit from you, and you benefit from myself. Um, first of all, as I said, that we thank Allah, the creator of the universe. The Lord, the creator who gave myself and you this opportunity. To be alive. To have the opportunity to say, Astaghfirullah, at least. To seek forgiveness. There are brothers and sisters who wish to be here today. They want to have the opportunity that I have, you have. But they are no more there. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, as we all know, that's wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha. If you are to count the favors, the bounties of Allah upon you, they are uncountable. You will never ever be able to count them. And honey and lakum walana jamian bi idnillah. I want to share these glad tidings, good news for you and for myself bi idnillah. Wadalik tasdiqan bi kawli rasulillahi sallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Rasul confirmed this by saying, "Majtama'a qawmun fi baytin min buyutillah." Whenever people gather, as we are now, in the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, remembering Allah, yatada Rasul fi ma baynahum, the land. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rehearse those words. And they remember in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have malaika, angels. They come down now, they've descended. We are surrounded by those angels. We are being surrounded by them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sakina. Is descending upon us, sakina, tranquility from Allah. And not only that, 
it said وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engulfed in them سبحانك يا رب and the angels they seek forgiveness for you and at the end they will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give their reports telling Allah that your servants are there glorifying you seeking forgiveness asking you for al-jannah and Allah will say to them that what are they asking for he said Allah they are asking for al-jannah he will say to them had they seen the jannah before what do you think they would have done he said Allah they would have worshipped you they would have praised you more than they do and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say according to the hadith that I have granted them al-jannah I have forgiven all of them Allahumma ja'alna minal maghfurin ya Rabb wa kathalik likewise they will convey that message that we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from the hellfire may Allah protect all of us from the hellfire ya Rabb and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say I have protected them بإذني. through his own permission that Allah will protect us from the hellfire so هذه بشرة these glad tidings for you to be here today and listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الموضوع our topic today is one of the most beautiful topics I love to talk about very important the last sermon I delivered here was about this topic when they told me I think the day before yesterday the brother Mustafa said that the topic is going to be about Walidain Birul Walidain I was happy because I love talking about this topic Birul Walidain to respect to be dutiful to honor to serve your parents. After the creation of this cone, the universe, the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created myself and you. To worship him. Nothing more. He said in Surah Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create man and jinn but to worship me. هذا هو غرد الخلق This is the purpose of creation. والعبادة The word عبادة According to the ulama when they define that word, they said ismun jami' It's a term, very comprehensive term, that it comprises, the word ibadah comprises of any thing, any act, any qawl, any fi'l, amal, act, that someone does, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with. That which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ibadah. Al-kalima tayyiba ibadah. Kind words is ibadah. As-salah ibadah. Prayer, the salah we establish is ibadah. Wad-du'a is ibadah. Du'a is ibadah. Wa-sadaqa kathalik ibadah. Likewise, sadaqa is ibadah. Wa birrul walidain ibadah. To be dutiful and respectful to your parents is ibadah. Any act of worship, action, a word that someone utter which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ibadah. Now, among the ibadahs, which is, of course, 
obligatory upon us to fulfill were established the greatest of all is that of ibadatillah wahda ay an na'buda wa la nushrika bihi shay'a to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not join in him with a partner that is a'la daraja the highest of all ibadah Allah says that وَقَدَى رَبُّكْ Your Lord has ordained you. I, He has decreed. He has legislated. He has made it compulsory upon you. وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاكَ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكَ وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاكَ your Lord has decreed that you must not worship except Him. That's the first. You establish your ibadah. You pray your salah. You give your zakah. You give your sadaqah. And whatsoever you do, it has to be khalis and wajhillah. Only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else. Julusuk huna. You being here, sitting here, it has to be purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah did not command you and myself, but to worship him with all sincerity. And he said in another ayah, In Allah la yaghfir an yushrak bih, wa yaghfir ma duna thalika li man yasha, wa man yushrak billah, faqad dalla dhulala mubina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive he or she who joins him with a partner in worship. Unless if they do tawbah, before death and he said وَيَغْفِرْ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَا يَشَاءُ but whatever sins myself and you commit which of course between me and Allah if Allah wants he will forgive you but the shirk he said anyone who commits shirk فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالَ مُبِينَ he is in a manifest loss Another ayah he said فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Very dangerous. Allah has made al-jannah. Al-jannah become haram for the person. Subhanallah. Al-jannah have become haram for the one who commits shirk. And he said وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ His place of abode will be the hellfire. May Allah save us from that. وَمَا لِلْظُّلِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And the oppressors, the wrongdoers, the mushrikeen, will have no help as you, Malqiyama. Now, after ibadah, the shirk, as we all know, that it is the greatest of all atrocities, a crime, a person, will commit on the surface of this earth, after that is to disrespect. Subhanak. To disrespect their parents. To be undutiful to your parents. It is the greatest of all sins. And I would say this. Before I mention the ayat and the hadith, bi-idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to look at today, inshallah, briefly. If your dad is alive, then the khayrat, the goodness, the ni'am, 
the sabil, the path ila al jannah for you is there. If your mom is alive, the shortcuts, the shortcuts to al jannah is before you. I repeat, if your dad is alive, the path, the road, the streets to Al Jannah is clear, is there for you. And if your mommy is alive, the shortcut to Al Jannah is before you. It's all yours. If your dad has gone to the world beyond, then Fakad Fatatk. Khairat kathira. Plenty of goodness has gone from you. You've missed it. And if your mom has passed away, subhanak, what a ni'am, great favors, great path to al Jannah. For you has disappeared, have disappeared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, as I mentioned the ayah, He said, وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا Your Lord said, He has ordained upon you that you must not worship except Him. And then He said, وَبِلْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا مقارنة و and واو نعطف for those who speak Arabic نحن و your Lord has decreed that you must not worship except except him and و and بالوالدين إحسانا and be dutiful be kind Show kindness to your parents. إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما. Whenever one of them or both of them they attain old age, Allah said, فلا تقل لهما أف. Do not utter a word of contempt. Now, why الكبر? Why old age is mentioned here? Wallahu well, ta'ala a'lam Allah knows best. But according to the Mufassirin, and we all experience that, that some people sometimes, when they become, they become older, they become a, bit, become a bit difficult to deal with. They get angrier quickly. Sometimes they behave like a child. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He created you from that stage as a baby. You grow. You become an adult. You become a father or mother. You become a grandfather or mother and etc. And then you become old and old and old until you become feeble. All that strength, everything is gone. And sometimes... The old person become upset with tiny thing. So, when you were young, your mom or dad was very patient with you. They showed that kindness towards you. They care. Despite sometimes you being naughty, but yet, they are there for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to show that care. That hana. Because that responsibility lies on your shoulder. To get al-jannah. Allah said, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ The uf is the least of all burden. 
or words or actions someone can do or words can utter that will hurt somebody. The ulama, they said, if your mom or dad ask you to do something for them and you do that, that thing, whatever, you know, request, right? Or whatever they ask you to do, you decide to do it. And while doing it, you're upset. But still you did it. You're committing a sin. Your dad or mom say, can you please go and give me a bottle of water? And you become upset because they ask you to go and bring this and etc. and etc. And you went and bring the bottle of water. Even though you did it, according to the ulama, they said, enter earth him, you have committed a sin. Because read Allah, the read the the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes with the pleasure of your parents. When a sahabi came to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking him to go for jihad. And then he said to him, go to your mom. Go and look after your mom. He said, فَثَمَّ الْجَنَّةِ That is your paradise. Your mother. The Sahabi asking the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that who is the best person for me to accompany to be at his or her service. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, Ummuk, your mother. And he said, Thumma man. Then who next? He said, Ummuk, your mother. Then who next? He said, Ummuk, your mother. And he said, who next? After that, Abuk, your father. Luqman, when he advised his son, the first admonition and advice was, Ya Bunay, O you my dearest son, La tushrik billah. Do not join Allah with a partner. Why? Because in the shirka, la dhulmun azim. Joining Allah with a partner, it is the greatest of all sins. And after that, the second wasiyah, advice he gave to his son, Allah said, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ Husna. I have enjoined upon man to show kindness, to be dutiful to your parents. Subhanak. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا your mother, brothers and sisters, your mother carry your pregnancy, your pregnancy for nine consecutive months. One ala one. Difficulties upon difficulties. Some of them, when they are pregnant, they yearn to eat something which you don't like at all. Subhanak. And it continues for nine, nine months. Nine months. They throw money sickness, how you call it. They barely eat. They hardly sleep. And they struggled, they suffered. She carried that pregnancy. And to deliver you the contraction. You know, men would not understand this. Because you don't feel it. Until a woman tells you how it feels. And with difficulties. And struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easier for them to deliver you. And also, 
from the womb you're breastfeeding from her milk she will not sleep if you don't sleep she will not rest if you're restless she will not be happy if you're sick when, you, when you're unhappy for her the whole world has turned upside down but after that oh she taught you how to speak you didn't know how to call the names how to say mom dad how to say a b or alif bata and the dad goes to work try to bring sustenance provision to the house after all that they worked very hard for you to go to school and some of us some of you you finish your first degree baccalaureate you got masters they call you doctors professors because your mom or dad may not have that certificate written masters you and i think we are more knowledgeable than her you and i think that i am more intelligent than my mom and dad yes the ilm, knowledge is a knowledge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives knowledge to whomever he wills or wants they said a child is a child to his father a mother even if that child become a king he's still the child of his father and mother so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that hamalathu ummuhu wahnan ala wahn wa fisaluhu fi amain and to breastfeed you it took place for two years then Allah said, Anishkur li wali walidayk. Be grateful to me and be grateful to your parents. Thalathu da'awat. Three types of dua. Supplication from three people. Mustajabah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that dua. Three. And one of them, the da'wah, the dua of al-walid, the father or mother, li waladihi aw waladiha, for his son or his son. That dua is mustajaba. Even if the walid a walid is not a Muslim. Can you imagine this? The dua of your father and mother. It's mustajaba. Allah will accept that dua. Even if they are not abid lillah. They're not Muslims. Allah will accept it. One day, I did not witness this. One of my teachers, one of the scholars that taught us, narrates this story to us. He said there was a day, brought light in a park light. This huge park, they saw this old man sitting. And after a while, they saw another young man coming towards this old man. And he came and grabbed this man and started beating him up. And 
everyone, those around, they rushed. So this young man, and they held him. And one of them wanted to beat the young man back, like he was doing to the old man. And the old man said, Utruku, leave him. He said, Utruku, why? Is he beating you up? He should show, show some respect. An old man? You beating up an old man? This haram. And then he said, Inna hubni, he is my son. What is your son? Then he is doing this. And he said, Do not touch him. Leave him. Because you see this place where I am, it is the same place, the same points where I was years back, I slapped my dad. I was upset. And I looked at my dad and slapped him. Because come at the dino to dad. The same way you treated your dad. The same way you treated your mom. That's how you will be treated. He said, I slapped my dad here. Because the Rasul wasallam said, Niqmatan. Two types of punishments. Two. يعجلهم الله في الدنيا قبل الآخرة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hasten with his punishments in this dunya before the akhirah. One of them is a zulm oppression. The da'wah, the dua of the oppressed person, it goes up kasharara, like a light, lightning. It goes up to Allah. Laysa baynahu wa bayna Allahi hijab. There is no barrier, there is no boundary between the dua, the supplication of the oppressed person and Allah. Allah will say to it, لَأَنْسُرَنَّكْ so surely I will answer to your call. I will grant you victory. Even if it takes long or a while, definitely I'm going to answer to your dua. And the other supplication or the adverb that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten is that of al li walidayhi. The one who disrespects and become undutiful to his or her parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten with the punishments of the aq li walidayhi. The one who disrespects his parents in this dunya. This dunya before the akhirah. Yes. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Min akbar al-kabair Among the greatest of all sins An yasubba al-rajul Aw sabbi al-rajul li walidayhi for someone to swear at his parents. And the Sahabas, they were shocked. Said, Ya Rasulullah, Ayasubbu rajlu walidei. <laughs> Would that time come? When someone will swear at his father or mother? And then he said, yes. When you swear at another person's father, they will swear at yours. To brothers and sisters not only the children all of us here we have fathers and mothers all of us had one you cannot replace your mother never you will never ever be able to replace your mother not your father neither your father never so now that we've got the opportunity, 
now that we are alive if your parents they've gone to the world beyond they are muslim may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them ya rab the dua you should all the time make for them allah says in the quran wa qur rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira oh allah have mercy on them just like the way they cherished me when i was young you do it all the time and you do lots of sadaqat for them lots of charity that's how we compensate yes and today especially some of us the culture that we came from when we come over here allah has blessed us with some wealth when we sent 100 pounds 200 pounds to our parents what we say to them the way we talk to them is as if they are our children and what baffles me so much brothers how many of us here i don't want you to put your hand up and you say yes me no you know yourself better than i do how many of us ever think of inviting your mom or dad to come over especially mothers to come and have a rest just to have good time with you just for you to have the opportunity to serve them as your parents instead most of those i know or i have heard when they start start having children they go one two three it become difficult for one of them to go to work and they don't want to pay for a carer or babysitting how you call it they said you know what the best we can do is to bring our mom one of us mom to come and sit with us so she can help us for what so look after what allahu akbar he reminds me the hadith of the rasul wasallam. he said min alamati sa'a among the signs of the qiyamah and tell it the ammata and tell it the ammatu rabbataha for the mother to give birth to her master she become the servant and the child become the master they command her oh mom you did not clean the child properly you didn't look after the child oh no mom don't shout to my at my child this way subhanak subhanak you heard when the sheikh was reciting the ayat the one who says so his parents the oath uttering that word of contempt disrespecting them the curse of Allah descends upon that person but it is not too late we all make mistakes we all make mistakes now is an opportunity for you to turn back to Allah if your mom is alive call your mom tonight if they are by you go to them mom and kiss their forehead if your dad is by you go to your dad kiss your dad's forehead and say to them dad or mom please forgive me make dua for me because both of them are your jannah my brothers and sisters as i said we're not going to take too long today inshallah this is just a quick and brief reminder that you will not come to the masjid <laughs> mashallah you try to implement all the sunnah but you forgot about one of the major ibadah in your life which is after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be respectful to your parents 
If you abandon that, then your worship will be of no use to you. Never. Wa imat ala dhalik. If someone dies upon that, that person is with the sakhatillah, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or his wrath. May Allah save us from that, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be among those who are beautiful to their appearance. For those who have made mistakes, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and forgive our parents, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, we'll come to the end of the session today. Anyone who have question, <coughs> inshallah, we'll give you um, uh, the opportunity to ask two or three um, questions, inshallah, then we come to the end. Barakallahu feekum. Nami habibi. Um, the brother, I think you heard the question he's saying that some Muslims they um, pray but yet they do celebrate Christmas and New Year. Um, this is a question of course you all heard you know, before they ask many of the ulama what I want to advise myself and you is to make sure we practice our deen. And the Rasul وسلم, said that Man بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ When you imitate a group of people where you do not belong, then you are part of them. For us, we are Muslims. Our ayad, which Allah has given to us, and the Rasul made it clear, is the Eid of Jum'ah, the Eid of Fitr, and the Eid of Al-Adha. And you have a time when the year goes round. Whenever the year goes round, one thing you have to remember, um, my humble brothers and sisters, is that part of you is going. Right? Today, if you are 50 years old, then remember that you are getting closer to the grave. So what you need to do is muhasaba. So put your soul into account, accountability. This is al-matloob, what is required. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us become steadfast in our deen and to avoid doing this kind of act because we are not part of them when it comes to the ibadah. But yet still, we respect them and we respect everybody's rights. But we don't have to um, participate in their worship or any act of ibadah. Wallahu ta'ala alam, Allah knows best. Um, this is very important as well. The brother is asking with regards to the topic today, what about when it comes to a stepmother? Let's say, I know somebody whose wife passed away and then they married another woman and this woman, mashallah, looking after the daughter. But um, she is not the biological mother. But now she becomes a stepmother. So that person, she's a mother. And then they will say, no, you're not my mother. You're my step. Don't talk to me that way, and etc. and etc. We have to understand that. The same respect you give to your mother, that's what you have to give to another person's mother, by the way, to start with. And let alone this person is considered to be a mother to you. Right? You have to respect them in the same manner. You have to treat them in the same way. By doing so, it's like your mother is alive and you're honoring your mother. Right? You're honoring your mother. So I would advise those who do those kind of acts to abstain from it and make sure they respect them and obey them for as long as what they ask them to do does not contradict that of the Quran and Sunnah. بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى there will be no problem والله تعالى عالم Allah knows best
The last question, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So, have a balance. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was giving talk last on Monday. Pardon me. Last um, Thursday, actually, and um, I do give talk on fiqh just for brothers. In another masjid on Thursdays and Mondays. And uh, one of the topics of the, the session was about the wives and the parents. There are so many scenarios. Today I intentionally um, wanted to make this lecture short. And again, when you make a lecture short, it's better. And making it too long, people become tired. They will not benefit. Allah Ta'ala Alam. And someone, we are talking about the rights of a fellow human being and the accountability, Yom Al Qiyamah, and how obedient should that wife wife be to her husband and how obedient should that husband be to his mother because there are some issues sometimes happen where you find some wives they don't want to be together with a mother-in-law never some they have their valid reason with maybe the way they want to be with their husband maybe they will not feel more comfortable when they Mother is there, Allah Ta'ala Alam. But some they go to the extent, some wives, and push their husbands to abandon their parents. We've heard that, and some we've seen it. And how do you have the balance? First of all, when it comes to the obedience of the parents, your mother. As you've heard, it's a command from Allah. And you should go to the highest, highest level of obedience. Imagine the greatest of all sin is shirk. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن جَاهَدَكُمَا وَإِن جَاهَدَكَ عَلَى Sorry, yeah. وَإِن جَاهَدَكَ عَلَى أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمُ فَلَا فَلَا تُتِعُهُمَا وَصُوحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Ma'arufa. Imagine your parents saying to you, no, you must worship an idol. You must. That should make you become angry, isn't it? But Allah said, do not obey them in that regard. But at the same time, you should be kind to them. Subhanallah. This is the right of Allah over his servants. But what about the right of a fellow human being over you because of that, you disobey Allah. Someone becomes de- undutiful to their parents. Now, when it comes to the woman, the Rasul as he mentioned, that any woman who obeys her husband, she observes salah, fasts, and etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give her the permission to enter through all the eight doors of what? Al Jannah. And the day of judgment, there are hukuk, rights. That's why I brought this. Now, when we die, human beings, in the grave, the first question is marabuk. As we all know, three, in the grave. And when you come out from the grave, the first, the Rasulullah said, لا تزول قدم العبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل أن أربع. One will not take a step يوم القيامة until they ask about what? Four. 
And those four, as you know, about your life, how you spend it, about your money, about your youth age, and etc. Now, when it comes to the hisab, the hisab, the rights, the first, hukuk, among human beings, for the woman, the wife, is the husband first. That's her first question about her husband. And you, the husband, the first question is about what? Huh? Your wife? So the wife, the first question for her is the husband, right? But the husband, what? Thank you. Your parents, you see? Your parents comes first. That does not give you the right to become unjust to your wife. No. But there has to be a balance. That's why when Allah blesses you in this dunya with a pious wife, he has given you the best of this dunya. Because they know the deen. They know how to treat their mo your mother. They know how to treat their mothers and etc. So it's always a challenge. But you have to remember this. That your mom comes first. But you should not use that also as well to become unjust to your wife. May Allah make it easier. I hope that answers your question. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, okay. Let me go to the Sheikh. Please forgive me. Uh -huh, Sheikh. Now, Sheikh. The Sheikh is asking a question, but I don't know Arabic properly, but I will try to translate, maybe interpret, yeah? If I'm wrong, he will tell me. The Sheikh said, thank you. The Sheikh said, he said, some of the masajid, what happens, some masajid when you go there? It happens so many masajid. He says, sometimes people bring something, maybe it can be a phone, it can be something they just um, put it in that spot, and then they leave it, they go. When it's time for salah, they come. That's right. Uh -huh. It says some of the masajid, that's what they do. So is this right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they told me, they said one of the masajid, one of the masajid, um, they had a fight. And then I said, why did they fight? They said, because people bring a bottle of water and they put it on the spot that spot and then they wait until when they want to do iqama they come there they said it's my spot and the sheikh said he said it's as if the bottle of water are the one doing the salah now it's becoming too much well according to the sharia ah, alam, if i come to the masjid if i come to the masjid and i sit on the spot i pray my salah tahiyat al masjid and i sit there and read the quran or I'm doing something dhikr. And for some reason, I want to go to the toilet. For some reason, something urgent I want to attend to, just there. Which is within the vicinity of the masjid. According to the sharia, whatever you leave there, is allowed for you to go and come back. That place belongs to you. Yeah? But, if someone comes to the masjid, and this is not a place where they see. They just come and do hajj. They occupy the place. Just put it there. So I don't want someone to pray. There. Only me in the first half. And then they go, they do their stuff. Even if they are mischief, they keep doing their own stuff. This is not allowed. This is against the teachings of Islam. So we have to make sure we practice it. Ya yeah, Habibi, when you come to the masjid, go to the first half. If you cannot pray in the first half, pray in the second. Wherever you have space, just pray there. It's not be a fight. 
It shouldn't be a fight at all. You'll be rewarded by Idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope, inshallah, we try to practice this sunnah, inshallah. This has been so many masajid. Allah ta'ala alam. Allah knows best. And keep on smiling. Allah loves you all, you know. Mashallah. Nam Shaykh. Allah ikrim al Shaykh. Um, first of all, I said I'm not going to take any question, right? But I have to honor my sheikh. He's my sheikh. I cannot say no to my sheikh. So I don't want the other brothers to feel like I've done injustice to you. Please forgive me. Nobody can say no to his sheikh. Likewise, I can't say no to my mom and dad, isn't it? After that, the ulama, the shiuch, the a'imma. When he was reading the Quran, mashallah, I didn't want him to stop. May Allah continue to beautify him inside and outside. So, my sheikh said, my sheikh. Oh no, inshallah, they, for, they forgive you already. Inshallah, don't worry. You are the sheikh. Now, um, my sheikh is saying that whenever a topic like this, for example, when we talk about birr al-walidain, to be dutiful to your parents, and we talk about the consequence, right? How severe the punishment is for the one who is undutiful or should disrespect to his parents. Some of the brothers or even sisters, they feel bad. They feel so bad. And some, they even hate themselves. I've had that and I've seen that. I want to say to those people, First of all, is a good sign. That's the sign of remorse. Of the one who has done evil. They've made mistake. Don't forget, that's the alamat, qabul tawbah. One of the signs of the, to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted your tawbah, when you show the remorse, you humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel bad inside you that I have done wrong. Because Allah knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. So when you turn to him and you seek forgiveness, you feel this way that I have wronged my mom. Maybe out of ignorance, I didn't know. Maybe because of jahiliya, I didn't know. Now that I've known, I've done this, it is not too late. Even if they've gone to the world beyond, it's not too late. Continue to make dua for them. And continue to seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ أَوْ يَذْلِمْ نَفْسَهِ He who commits a sin, or they oppress their souls, ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ And they seek forgiveness. They turn to Allah and seek forgiveness. Allah said, يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا they will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oft forgiven and the most merciful. So when you feel that way, it is good. Of course, that shows that you have accepted that you've done wrong. It's a sign of guilt, which is good. And that should make you become more humble and more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also, if they are alive, make sure you rectify it. What you haven't done before, do it now. بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى ما لا ميك تيزيا فما يصف أن الله فيه الله مغفر لنا ورحمنا واسترنا وافعنا وتجاوز عن سيئتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار 
اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم اغفر لاخواننا المسلمين في فلسطين وانصرهم وعيدهم يا رب العالمين وفرج همهم وهم المأمومين من المسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل لهم على سيدنا محمد وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته